let us introduce Małgorzata Zalewska Gutman and Gary Gutman, sorry, Gutman, who are joining us here. Thank you so much for being here on this very, very important day. Our pleasure. Thank you for inviting us. And before we get into a, a conversation with them about their artistic work, we'd like to show you a little piece from a special musical called The Letter from Warsaw. To Warsaw for peaceness and goodbye. The letter from Warsaw. The letter from Warsaw. How can we The letter from Warsaw. Meeting said. The letter from Warsaw. One forget. Each soul's track on shadow sitting. Understand the way, let's try it again And pretend we are friends today I know that I should, I should forgive and forget One thousand years in this land Just let go and let go spend You don't understand Right, so we heard a clip there uh, And I think also from the whole fusion of that I think it's music, it's culture, it's America, it's, it's Poland I mean, it's so much in there um, What is that main theme? I want to start with, uh, maybe ladies first Let's start with you What is that main theme through all this? at the core of this musical? Uh, different points of view. The point of view of uh, the Polish nation and the point of view of the uh, American uh, Jewish uh, population. Uh, Gary, when he came to Poland, he discovered that the stories that are told outside of Poland aren't really the real stories. Uh, Poland has a story to tell. And he created a uh, this uh, musical uh, with uh, Doman Nowakowski, very good Polish uh, script writer. And uh, we recorded also uh, an album in both versions in uh, English and Polish. And we wanted to tell a story uh, about how it really happened and how people actually lived in the past and they discovered right now in the present uh, they are stories from the past that were untold because, of course, of the trauma of the Holocaust, the difficulties with communications. And then uh, we wanted to also bring back the wonderful uh, character, which is Marek Edelman. We wanted to honor him with his permission. He knew about this musical being composed. And we had also a special uh, character in the musical that was um, presented uh, as a Marek, which was uh, Marek Edelman. It was based on his fight uh, for freedom, because uh, what was the most important for him to actually stand with the gun in his hand. Right, and that's why also, back to the daffodils, and that's the connection we're talking about that today, so really yes. significant. Yeah. Gary, perhaps you can tell us, because you were raised in the States, in Oregon, and then mm -hmm. you moved to Poland, so perhaps you can take us back to the States and tell us your story a little bit. I think the most interesting thing for me growing up uh, in the United States is that we never heard very much about Poland, especially uh, in the Jewish community, uh, in, the, in the three different sects of Jewish community, the Orthodox, Conservative, and Reform. Uh, we knew and saw the videos of the Holocaust, and that's about it, and we saw we were shown the, the videos of the tragic events, and that's pretty much all we knew. It was a general uh, education about all the bad things that happened in Poland, all the horrible things. Interestingly enough, we never heard very much about what happened to the Polish population, the non-Jewish population. So when I came to Poland, and uh, I gained new Polish friends, and uh, my wife, of course, is Polish, and her, my father-in-law is still around. He's 89 years old, and he remembers uh, Warsaw in 1940 and 1940. Well, he remembers 1939. I started hearing stories, personal stories, but even more global stories about what happened to the Polish community and how the Polish community was treated, and it. 
it struck me. It really struck me because I'd never heard these stories before. And I, and these stories became very important to me. And I saw both sides, both sides. The Jewish community has a horrible, tragic story to tell. And I realized that the Polish community as well has a horrible, tragic story to tell. The same number of people lost their lives, the three million Polish Jews and the three million Poles who lost. I didn't know this before I came here. So it caused me to really think more about how stories get inflated. History gets, some parts of history get buried, other parts of history get exposed. And ultimately it's all true. Give or take some personal stories that people don't remember handed down through generations. But I realized that both sides of this story have a point of view and have a reason to speak. So we com I composed a musical, 22 songs and libretto along with Doman Novakovsky that, that showed both sides of the story. The musical doesn't draw any conclusions because I don't know what the answer is the, other than finding some middle ground uh, and compromise in order, in order to be able f for everybody to survive and to move forward. As we see not, uh, as we not only remember from the Holocaust, but we s see today in uh, a number of areas in the world where this conflict between two sides continues. Yeah. Indeed, but how did you, how did you meet Doman Novakovsky? Uh, I'd had a meeting uh, with uh, Emilian Kaminsky from Teat Kamienica. And we originally were going to, uh, we were discussing doing, I was actually discussing with Emilian doing a big American big band swing musical. And he said, now, nah, why don't you write a musical about what happened in this particular building? And uh, because that building was, was on the border of ghetto and was one of the few buildings that actually survived, that was not completely uh, destroyed. And a dear friend of his was Doman Novakovsky. And in the middle of that meeting, he picked up his phone and called Doman and he said, what are you doing? And Doman said, what do you need? And he said, come on down. And I met Doman and within 10 minutes, we were like brothers. We were partners. We, we, we saw uh, the, the means to the end, the reason to write this uh, musical and how important it was to tell this story musically. That, that was going to be my next point, because it's not a play, it's not a book, it's a musical. And I think also through your own musical experience, and I think it was the trumpet was, was your very first, one yes. of the first instruments. Right. What does that do in terms of telling this message? I mean, why was it through music? Because I think that's important as well here. Very important, um, because music, which underscores text, speaking, is very emotional and it adds an element to a story, to a dramatic story that helps support and underscore the emotional aspect of what the story is trying to tell. So when people go to see a musical, uh, they're not only getting the story and the text, but they're also hearing lyrics to songs that are, are as well telling the story. And then the music underneath, which, which is, um, if composed correctly and the right way, we all hope that, uh, that it's done well. The music, even without the text, without lyrics, is very, very powerful. And we know this from uh, many musicals that dealt with uh, certain difficult dramatic stories. I'm thinking of Fiddler on the Roof, for example, or Les Miserables. Those two in particular dealt with very tragic events in different countries' history. And many people can hum the music from, uh, you know, if I were a rich man, mm -hmm. and everybody knows that first sentence, and, and, and maybe a sentence after that, they don't know all the lyrics, but everybody knows the melodies and the songs, and it's left an indelible impression on everybody. And that musical is 50 years old. And it helps remember the story. The music is actually supporting the story. That's right. So, so, a, so a musical is a very rich, much more rich environment, in my opinion, than even a strong dramatic 
mm -hmm. presentation because it underscores the story. Yeah. And just before we wrap up, Bogdan, can you tell us how you both met? Because you are you embody the Polish Jewish love story. Well, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> uh, well, we met at the, uh, at the uh, music festival. I was in the classical section because I'm a harpist, I'm a classically trained harpist. And Gary was in the jazz section. So he came to my concert and actually interrupted the concert because he thought I'm just harpist playing to the coffee or wine. And I was playing a regular recital. And then he came to apologize. <laughs> And that's how it started. And that apology did not go very well. <laughs> but what, what happened, just really quickly, what happened after that is that we were performing throughout Europe over the, the rest of that summer. And we kept, we had no idea what each other's schedule was, but as it turned out, we kept performing at many of the same festivals. So it was like kismet. Fate. We, it was fate. We kept running into each other over the course of the summer and then... I, I was and then I bought you, <laughs> and then I bought you a, a pistachio ice cream yes, cone in Florence. In I Florence, remember. and it started to melt. And, yes. yes, and the melting ice cream cone is kind of a um, visual image of the rest of our marriage. <laughs> so I was going to say, perhaps another idea for another musical in all this could well be. Well, I think it could well be. Well, <laughs> actually, actually, Gary is working on uh, on another musical right now about Christina Skarbek, Christine Granville, the favorite spy of the church. Mm. A wonderful right. story. Very interesting. So we will story. invite you for a premiere in 2020. Oh, well, we Fantastic. await the invitation. But then. only with pistachio ice cream, though. OK, <laughs> It'll, on the house. All right. Well, look, uh, thank you both for coming in. Really appreciate it on this Our important pleasure. day. And I think also bridging music, Jewish relations, Polish relations, I think it's also so important to remember, but have that positive Absolutely. Fusion. Always Absolutely. important to remember. Yes. Yeah. Thank yes. You. We, we must remember. Yes. Thank you. Małgorzata Zalewska, Guthman, and Gary Guthman, thank you so Thanks much for so much. coming in. Thank you thank for the you. invitation.